Well, hello, my beautiful Pisces. Welcome to my channel. This is Baba Jolie here with your yearly reading for 2024. I've already cleansed your space and I've meditated on your cards. For those of you who are returning, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for all your wonderful likes, shares, and subscribes. I am truly grateful for all your beautiful energy. Just a little reminder, though, this is a general reading, not a one-to-one -one reading, just so you're aware. Also, please be mindful, scammers are about to pretend to be me and lots of other tarot readers. I do not do personal readings. I do not take your money, e-gifts, donations. I'm not on Facebook, WhatsApp, PayPal, Telegram, or Patreon. I will never ask you for your credit card details. I will never ask for personal details. And I'll also never give you a cell phone number to call. So if anyone masquerading as me asks for anything at all, please report them or ignore them. It is a scam, okay? Let's move straight on with your reading. I'm going to cleanse your space hourly, so please be mindful there's going to be three loud sounds. Let us begin. <laughs> Okay, my beautiful Pisces, this is your yearly reading for 2024. I'm going to get your overarching energy first and then follow it with an in-depth look month by month just to see what is coming your way. Now, I do want you to be aware that this year, whilst it will be a bit of a difficult year, actually, there's a lot of amazing potential for you to tap into. So in terms of the collective, it is really, really positive, okay? However, I feel it is my duty to let you know about some of the difficult transitory alignments that are coming towards us collectively that may influence how the year goes, okay? So whilst there is so much positive available for us, there is a little bit of negative too, okay? So it's really important to give you balance there. I would not be uh, doing myself justice or my craft justice if I just ignored the bumps in the road and gave you only the positive, of course. So, um, this year, it will be considered an intense transitional year full of plot twists, shocking exposés, and new technological firsts. A year that will be governed by the super serious planet Saturn, the great karmic retribution planet that can throw some tough lessons, challenges, or even course corrections our way, but ultimately it encourages us to get serious about our life path for our highest good. Now, I've already mentioned one of the most significant and powerful transits occurring on the 20th of January. Pluto moving into the maverick and revolutionary sign of Aquarius. Now, Aquarius energy rules society, social order, people's rights, infrastructure changes, as well as technological advances. Pluto is also associated with the judgment card, okay? Now, that entails an awakening uh, to connect your soul on a deeper level this year to reset or rebirth in some way. So expect some wake-up calls and controversial revelations on a global scale because 2024 is a transitional year for major change, and it really is a big deal. Pluto does not change signs regularly. It's often referred to as the generational planet, and the last time Pluto was actually in the sign of Aquarius long-term was in 1778 to 1798 where we had powerful uprisings in the form of the American and French revolutions. Now, I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen uh, this time around, but um, this energy will be with us right up until 2043. That's a long time. So perhaps it may be how the collective might be feeling long term later on down the line uh, because tension tends to rise a little bit when we have this uh, planetary alignment as well. Okay, now, of course, every planet has a positive and a negative. And on the negative side, we may see oppressive power plays or restrictions on freedoms of speech or even changes in policies, rules and regulations. But on the positive side, we'll potentially see more power to the people moments as Aquarius tends to join society together to exert their free will rather than to tear it apart. And the last time that Pluto actually moved signs long term was in 2008, and it was into the sign of Capricorn, which rules money, governments, and power structures. Now, Pluto can be a very destructive force, and in 2008, we saw one of the most notably difficult financial crashes the world has ever witnessed. And whilst Pluto will spend the majority of time in the sign of Aquarius, which is really positive, it will retrograde from September to November back into the sign of Capricorn. Now, this could indicate 
indicate we might potentially see some crisis moment economically. Um, but, you know, it's only something to be aware of during this period. Uh, ultimately, as Pluto moves back into Aquarius, we may also see a more global launch of... Um, sorry, my guys just said you're not done yet, and they're so right. I haven't even finished the year. Um, I've only got um, right up until April for you. Hopefully that's not an omen that, uh, I mean, it, interestingly enough, ends on the world card there. So perhaps some sort of project comes to the end and you're like kicking back and relaxing for the rest of the year. Hopefully there's uh, some better stuff to come. I mean, looking at the beginning of your year in particular, my beautiful Pisces, it looks really super positive. Yeah, look at that. This is like uh, receiving some sort of uh, abundance or some sort of project coming to fruition and then, you know, some sort of goal being reached. So it's really interesting that I sort of almost was like, well, now I've accomplished what I truly set out to do. What's next? So it's almost like your year kind of starts really in April. Okay, now, of course, that could be a financial start to a year, uh, but also, I mean, I see so far two starts to your year. Of course, the calendar month of January starting your year, and then we have uh, the world card there as well, which indicates some sort of new accomplishment or new start um, in some way. Uh, but we'll get to the details when we get there. Um, now, just to let you know also that, um, you know, this year, uh, we may see some like innovation when it comes to technology because Aquarius energy, it tends to fast track, especially in the realm of technology and AI. And when we have that uh, shift at the end of the year, uh, it would be a time to launch it, of course, because the energy applies itself to that um, shift. So uh, I always say this, but it is a perfect time to get into the habit of downloading monthly statements to keep documented proof of what you have in your accounts, should there be any gremlins in the system. Um, also, Pluto reveals any hidden agendas, wrongdoings, or information kept from the collective from January the 20th onwards. So 2024 is about to get really interesting from that date onwards, but do watch for distractions sent to camouflage these potentially controversial moments because they will arise. But ultimately, there is a strengthening of community this year, giving a voice to the collective, a real desire to change the world for a better place. And of course, um, there is a more um, yearning for independence. And on a personal note, it's actually really positive because Pluto actually asks you to see below the surface, to uh, you know, reestablish your power in some way, exert your independent nature, do bold and daring things that you've never done before, integrate and spread your wings to fly. And on a psychological level, it will help you break negative patterns to free yourself up from any self-sabotage traits or self-doubt even. Now, Mercury, planet of communication, starts directly this year, making for a smoother transition into 2024. It will, of course, retrograde uh, periodically throughout 2024. So uh, if you're uh, working on something, especially in terms of electronics, I would save it down just to make sure. Um, and of course, if you're thinking of launching something online this year, it actually will be truly prosperous. Humanity will access clear, logical thinking, and it will be uh, a time where you'll feel more organized to make swift decisions or changes to enable you to reach successful milestones in your life. And I see that you're going to reach quite a few of those this year as well on a personal level for you, my beautiful Pisces. Um, also, you may be uh, planning and strategizing. That'll be at the forefront of your mind. And Jupiter, planet of good luck expansion and opportunity will be in the earth sign of Taurus. So 2024 might be more money focused, encouraging you to be more mindful of budgets and get serious about your goals with a renewed fire in your soul. Jupiter also aspects Saturn to start this year, which is truly fortuitous for the collective, adding extra luck. And then Uranus takes over to amplify that success uh, opportunity. And of course, uh, it'll encourage you to seek new knowledge, either through classes of learning online, uh, reading more books or online downloads. And with all these shifts and plot twists, you may even find yourself being super flexible to combine all these elements and find new ways of earning money, especially online, and generate more finances to create security in an ever changing environment. Now, it will be more important than ever this year to create space for mindfulness, to connect to nature and focus on your true calling as well as develop and nurture friendships and relationships. There are some bumpy times ahead in 2024. I'm not going to lie to you. You can all feel it. You're a very intuitive sign. You have a lot of depth to you, my beautiful Pisces. And, you know, I would say there's three major things to watch out for, especially at the end of the year. Uranus retrograding from September, Jupiter retrograding from October, and then Saturn direct from November, because this conversation 
combination, it occurred at the same time we had that financial domino effect in 2008. So it could set us all up for a wobble. I'm not saying a big crash, but there's definitely energy there that supports some sort of crisis point. And ultimately, the year, though, on a personal level, it has so much potential for you to tap into. And January is your blueprint month to start from, to reach your goals higher than ever before. You know, recognize that true happiness comes from within, and then it filters out to your external environment, establishing security, comfort, and prosperity throughout the year. And looking at your cards here, I really feel like you are focused on your purpose. You're going to get stuff done, and you are going to be very, very successful. I mean, your first card here is the North Node. So you're focusing on your true life's purpose, mission, and your calling, okay? So you're going to almost have like a tunnel vision this year on where your heart feels like it belongs. And it says here, North Star, life purpose, journey, karmic destiny, learning period, path, the challenge, fulfillment, and fruition. And I can see so many opportunities this month. There's one, two, three, four, uh, five, six moments, like major moments this year for you for prosperity and, you know, accomplishing uh, something that you will celebrate. So I see like six major moments this year that you're going to be like, yes, I did it. Okay. Whatever it is for you. So you're going to be run by your inner compass this year. And it's all about your journey this year, enjoying the moment, you know, because sometimes we're really focused on the destination. We, we forget to enjoy the way. So I feel it's really important for you to recognize that you're a human being, not a human doing all the time. And whilst you are focused on like restructuring your life, decluttering in some way, especially January, this is a big month for you. I know this reading's a little bit late for you there, but um, you know, I got one of those seasonal colds. So I had to take a little bit of a pause uh, in order to recharge my batteries to give you a proper reading. Um, but here I am, I'm back to best now. Um, but with the January energy, this is about you restructuring and decluttering your life. So it's almost like you're setting yourself up for a big year ahead. And we've also got the moon. Now, this is all about your feelings. It's about, of course, your vision of your dreams, but it's also about looking at your fears this year, all the lessons that you've learned that sometimes fear can hold us back. And we need to really look at what triggers us or, you know, really the... Um, the root cause of it. And once we identify that, we can actually see a way to resolve it and recognize that, you know, fear has no place in our life. We can be all that we want to be and then some. So I definitely get a sense here that you are developing your spiritual gifts, your instincts. I feel like you are also opening yourself up heavier, as it were, in your intuition. And when I say heavier, because I feel like you're going to go into like some sort of spiritual practice this year. It could be meditation, mindfulness, which is truly important, but it could also be like a spiritual work or a spiritual development, like a Reiki or, I mean, even Tarot. It could be scrying. It could be that you're opening yourself up to... Um, they're showing me something remote viewing right now. So some of you may be like really curious about these areas and you may be looking into them a little bit further to see if there's something that you really want to develop or even look into. But it says here, feelings, moods, femininity, cycles, habits, instinct, mother of the soul, uh, the past, uh, dreams, comfort, and lineage. So you're really looking at who you are, where you are right now in your life, and where you want to take things to the next level. But also you're highly sort of um, recognizing that ancestors before you laid the path for you to uh, follow on from. So I definitely get a sense here that, um, you know, establishing yourself this year is truly important. And I feel there's lots of moments where you're going to see opportunity come and you're going to seize the moment, seize the day there. Now, also, we have the fish, which is all about abundance. So a very prosperous year. Now, don't get me wrong. As I said, you know, this year, economically, there's going to be some tight pinches. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, increases in, you know, the price of living. We've all seen it over the last couple of years. So you don't need me really to tell you about the obvious. But I definitely get a sense here that you're finding your way through that, being really flexible, being in the flow, and finding pockets and moments of true prosperity, and both on an emotional fulfillment level, but also on a wealth level as well there. I definitely see that you are increasing your finances this year, or you have a plan that is going to be truly abundant. Some of you may even set up your own business. This may be something that you are launching in February, actually, uh, because we have a high business month for you in February. Even if you're retired, it could be that you are thinking about using or utilizing, you know, your skills um, to do something creative and uh, for example, like write a book or 
paint uh, you know, a canvas because they show me a blank canvas right now. It's almost like this year is your blank canvas and you can fill it with whatever it is that you desire and it will create something truly special and beautiful and also memorable. They'll give me the word memorable there. So some of you, you know, even if you're retired, you may do something creative where you could put it online and sell it. May even be like a course of learning for people, you know, telling people what you used to do and showing them the way. Maybe, you know, highlighting any pitfalls that you went through that they can learn from to avoid and, you know, really truly be the best that they can be. So I definitely see like some of you could be teachers or mentors or even, you know, consultants going back into the workforce periodically. Now, I'm not going to say uh, every um, beautiful beautiful Piscean out there who is retired is going to return to the workforce, but it may be something that's on your mind. Okay. So I'm just feeling that energy. And again, it's not going to resonate with everyone because I actually see more wealth, more fulfillment and more travel coming in for you this year. So whether you're retired or not, I really feel like you're in the flow of abundance this year and things are going to increase. Also, you're going to be a little bit more sociable than you've been. I definitely see with this card, the birds card in the Lenormand deck really indicates some of you are feeling really frustrated. Like, you know, you're anxious of what is to come for the year, but I feel there's nothing to worry about. I mean, there's going to be restructures, you know, in terms of our environment, in terms of our world at large, but I feel like you're finding your flow to be in a really secure position position to weather any of those changes, okay? But also, this card can indicate that some of you want this year, 2024, to be so different. You know, you're opening yourself up to adventure, you're blossoming in new ways, and I feel like you're doing new things that excite you, that inform you, that educate you, and keep life interesting, okay? Uh, also, uh, this card it definitely indicates, you know, you being able to negotiate better deals this year for yourself, and this doesn't have to be, like, in a work environment. It can be that you are, you know, connecting to service providers, that have given you like gas or electricity for years and suddenly you know what you get to negotiate a better deal or it could be that you end a subscription in order to uh, you know get a new subscription elsewhere and it's at lower rates so I definitely get a sense here that you're getting discounts so there's more money in your pocket as opposed to spending so you're really looking at budgets there as well but also I get this sense of community wanting to involve yourself more in what the world has to offer now this could be on a local scale is what I see there some of you may get in, you know involved in community events or you may actually uh, you know discover your neighborhood in a new way um, they're showing me, they're showing me a little chess piece right now. Uh, it's a knight, okay, in the chessboard pieces. Um, now a knight, um, a, a knight can like move two uh, squares forward and then one to the left or the right. I feel like it goes in an L shape. So this can indicate, I mean, knights in tarot, they tend to be uh, very goal oriented. So some of you may like have to take a sidestep this year in some plan. Um, but this actually means that you're meant to do that because there's like an opportunity that arises from that sidestep. I feel like you still reach your goal. Knights always reach their goal. Okay. So uh, I feel some of you, if there's an obstacle in your way, you overcome that obstacle, whatever it is. So I'm definitely getting this power packed month for you where you get to shift your reality in the way that you want to and accomplish whatever it is you set out to do. And of course, we've got the flowers um, card here for you. So that's about, you know, enjoying the moment, happiness, you really blossoming, appreciating the everyday. Also, I see lots of invitations coming in for you this year. Uh, these could be invitations to galleries or to go on road trips with friends or could even be like, you know, if you are in a career, you could be invited to like join like a specialized group or really like go out and meet new people, network to take things to the next level. And if you're an entrepreneur, this is a really great year for you to take things to the next stage or branch out in some way, go international or go viral because I definitely see success success here for you too. But let's get to your month by month because the death card signifies change, okay? All change, new year, new you. And I know that's such a cliche, but I really feel deep within you, something has changed. And it's like, this has been a long time coming. For a couple of years now, you've been feeling a shift. And 2024, it just feels like you're rising, like that phoenix rising from the ashes energy. It's like you're so ready to take on 2024. And 
you know, I feel a lot of you are cutting things out that, you know, no longer resonate with you. This could be a food substance that perhaps has been making you feel lethargic or triggering you in some way with migraines or just making you feel low vibe or even giving you some sort of reaction. It may even be like a rash or something. I'm just getting an energy here of you really looking at diet, but also looking at your environment. So I see decluttering, reorganizing of like shelves and cupboards and just getting to all the jobs that perhaps you've been meaning to do. This may be something that you've already been doing for the first like week and a half of January. But I also get an energy here of you like uh, cultivating your landscape, looking at planting new seeds, new ideas, and you know, really nurturing something, a goal. It's almost like a goal that you start in January. In April, you'll accomplish it. But you hear some really great news about it in uh, March there, but we will get to that in a moment. But I feel the first like five months of the year for you, you're on a winning streak. And I definitely see that uh, things are working in your favor. Now, this can also indicate some of you are looking at old habits, especially since you have the moon energy there. You know, whether these are overthinking habits, you know, we all do it from time to time. We overthink a situation, overanalyze, or whether it is, you know, we're tempted to um, have something or somebody in our life that perhaps is not potentially good for us. So I really feel like you're looking at your life in general and saying, nope, that's not right for me. That's not right for the path that I have in mind for me for 2024. I really feel like you're in control of making sure that nothing gets in the way of your happiness. Because as you can see there, the death... Uh, card there. It's got a scythe and that has the potential to reach all the clouds that are in front of the sun. But also the cockerel is like a timing mechanism. It's almost like you're signifying time in something in your life that it, it's time to get serious about your work goals or time to get serious about that, um, you know, body, mind and soul plan that you may have for yourself. Time to get rid of anything toxic that is not right for you. But this could also like come down to something as, you know, localized as, you know, you're getting rid of subscriptions that perhaps you haven't really connected to for a while. You know, if you've like had that magazine that you have coming in monthly or periodically and you're like, you know what, I really like it, but I don't really have time to look at it. It may be, you know, me just spending money in an area where I'm not really utilizing uh, that uh, magazine or subscription or whatever it is. So I definitely see you could be cutting things out completely. Um, also, this could be about, you know, reestablishing your power and, you know, making room for something greater. I feel like you're so glad that 2023 is over and you've shut that door now and you're embracing all the potential and possibility that January and 2024 and beyond can hold for you. Now, let me just clarify that death card there. Oh, you're establishing your power big time. Okay. Nine of cups. You're making some wishes there. Um, I mean, the fact that I'm clarifying the death card, which is January, and then in February, you've got the emperor. So there's some sort of power play here. Some of you may hear of like a promotion or a raise. Uh, you may hear about it in January, but you fully establish yourself in that role in February. For some of you, it could be a business that you're launching, um, you're branching out in some way, but ultimately I feel like you're being strict with your goals and your intentions, you know, making New Year's resolutions, things like that, because we've got the uh, Nine of Cups here. There's something that you are wishing for or that you're working towards and nothing or nobody is going to get in the way of you accomplishing whatever it is that you you want because you know the nine of cups is to have a wish fulfilled but also the emperor is to be strict about trying to obtain those goals those wishes and those dreams because there's a lot of effort that goes into what we want okay you know you can visualize and manifest and the universe will meet you halfway, but you must make some sort of concerted effort to uh, reach your goal. So by putting one foot in front of the other. Now, they're showing me the chess piece again. So it could be that you're strategizing a plan, okay? And, you know, you're going to um, overcome any obstacle that perhaps you have uh, encountered in the past this year. I feel like it's not going to happen for you this year. Uh, you're not going to have any blockages, especially at the beginning, um, you know, the first five months of the year. I feel like there's a path being made clear for you to accomplish whatever goal it is that you have your mind on. But also I feel that um, this could be 
almost like that you're creating a plan and not only are you sticking to it, but I feel like no temptation is arising. So if, for example, you're cutting out a food substance that you truly love, but it's really not you know, helping your body in some way or is fluctuating your hormones, I really feel like you're being very strict and saying, no, I'm not, I'm not allowing temptation to uh, come in. And I really feel like you reach your goal because of it, because of your willpower. So this is exerting your will. But also, I mean, the emperor energy can also indicate some sort of uh, structure that's in place in your world. This could be um, like the way that you know, your local town is being governed or your um, community is being governed, or it could be, um, you know, something that happens on like a more globalized scale, like your country or your, your district. So I feel there could be something that you've been hoping to happen and suddenly it gets restructured and it works in your favor, or it's something that you've been desiring for a long time and you're surprised, but it actually happens for you. And that doesn't happen often, but I feel like there's something in January into February that you hear about that you're like, I'm so glad they did that. I've been petitioning for a while, or you've been hoping for it, wishing for it. You get it. You establish it. Okay. But if you're trying to launch a business, I definitely see that it'll be very lucrative, uh, very um, abundant is what I see there. And that, I mean, you may launch yourself as a CEO or some of you may even get that promotional raise and it's everything you wished for. This is a time for leveling up. And if you're retired, this could be that you are, you know, getting a lot of downloads about your true life's purpose. You're maturing in ways and enriching in ways that you never thought possible. Some of you may go on like, uh, you know, a specialized trip. And when I say by specialized, I mean, it could be that you've like plot pointed different types of trips and what you want to see, you know, you're not just going to a country. I feel like there could be certain things that you're going to travel around to because I feel it's very adventurous, like, um, you know, a cultural getaway where you actually open yourself up to uh, all the knowledge uh, from all the ancestors that went before in different civilizations. So some of you could be plot pointing that or booking it in some way. Um, also, the emperor is about getting good advice, okay, or getting advice from someone in a position of authority where you need help. And it can mean that, you know, you get really great news because the month of January is showing as a really great news month. Not only have you got a, a major arcana, which means you're in a very great position, you are establishing your power, you're being strict with yourself. I mean, you're protecting your family or your friends or you're protecting your assets in some way. But the Nine of Cups also indicates you're getting a wish fulfilled or you feel like, you know, fulfilled in, you know, a few areas of your life. Of course, humans, we always want more. So I feel like you're looking at the everyday, enjoying the moment and enjoying the simplicity of January because it's almost like January and February are kind of like restructure months where you are planning something. And then as you move into March, that's when it all starts moving forward. You see progress, you see lots of great news coming your way. And I feel like you reach your goal in April. And then it's almost like you sit back and relax a little bit more in the month of June and say, you know what I did? A, sorry, not June, May. Um, and you look back and think, you know what, I did a really good job. So as we move into the month of February, this is about you being being in control, but also it's an energy of you like needing to be strict with yourself. So I see you being really strict with your budget, uh, financially especially. I feel that you are uh, keeping a tight rein on your finances there, uh, especially as you, you know, it's like the first part of the year, you're recouping energy and recouping um, finances, being able to save a little bit more. So perhaps at the end of 2023, you overindulged in some way or overspent. I mean, you know, you enjoyed what you uh, spent your finances on, of course, but it's now about getting serious about replenishing. Finishing. That's the energy that I've got there as well. Also, the emperor energy is about um, feeling that, you know, calm in the chaos. You know, the world is a very chaotic place and we can see that there are some very difficult energies occurring in the world. And, you know, to some degree, we can do something about it from our own position. So, you know, charitable work or trying to find out how we can be of uh, service in some way. And I feel it's really important because I see you being humanitarian um, and I get this energy of you trying to help. So it could be you even getting advice on how you can help make the world a better place. But also I feel this is about protecting everything 
everything that you've worked really hard for too and it's like finding the happy medium there where you extend the goodness so I see you being charitable during this time like extending um, anything prosperous that has come your way I feel like you're extending the goodness to friends to family but also to uh, strangers as well uh, but let's see a little bit more about uh, February for you. We've got the Ten of Wands. Okay. Uh, now, Ten of Wands, I feel the whole year for you is going to be really busy. I feel like you're going to be multitasking. I really feel like you're getting back into the flow of life and uh, actioning some sort of goal or dream. And I definitely see that, you know, you are, um, you're needing to make sure that you get quality rest. Um, we got the, the King of Wands there as well, okay? So it's like you are highly energized, but the Ten of Wands kind of signifies that there is a potential for burnout or, you know, especially when you're leading with your passions. And it's not that you're overloaded. I feel like you're in control of it. But you know when you are doing something you truly enjoy, suddenly, you know, you can go for hours doing something that you truly enjoy. You forget to have food. You forget to have a lunch break. You forget to have uh, a break. You're always on the go. And that's the energy that I've got coming through because it's a really positive February for you. It just feels like, you know, you're enjoying what you're doing. You're in control. You've established a power system. I mean, it could be that you're stepping into a leadership role or promotion uh, during this month. It's a really big month for that, especially since we've got the King of Wands. But also the King of Wands is someone who is, you know, a, a go-getter, someone who is like entrepreneurial spirit. So it could be that you're launching a business and you're in the flow of getting it all done by yourself. Because I get this energy of you, like, actioning this all by yourself and the ten of wands is like it's exhausting but also i feel some of you are clearing space so that you can be enjoying more of life okay i feel like you're trying to declutter your life in some way so that you have less ties to all past situations to weigh you down so that you are more energized um so it feels very much like january and february are really kind of like big months for you to prune your life in some way and I just heard deadheading the roses, okay, so that you can promote more growth is what I can see here as well. Now, the King of Wands, you're influencing. Um, I really feel um, that if you are on social media, for example, this could be a high time where people are paying attention to what you have to say, what you have to offer. You're really in a powerful position. Male or female, not a gender-specific reading. It's about the energy. This is about you being bold, being daring, having the motivation and the drive to get whatever it is that you want accomplished done. So I definitely see that you're going from strength to strength. Very independent nature you have. You're literally marching to the beat of your own drum, but there's just a little cautionary energy there. Don't burn yourself out. Ten of Wands can also indicate that you are someone who is super strong. Life has taught you to be so strong. So then you tend to like automatically take on more than you should. So I feel like you're really looking at, you know, uh, over committing yourself. Uh, I do feel there may be something of importance in the month of um, February where you may double book. You don't mean to, but I feel like there's a potential of double booking in the month of February. Uh, so just watch out for that because I feel like one event in particular is truly important that you must attend. And it's like the other one, you may let someone down and it may hurt their feelings. So that's coming out there too as well. But highly energized month where you're like in the flow of taking control of your life and actioning things. Now, I do see the month of uh, March as being a month where you may take a quick trip or some sort of travel. Um, it's almost like a prelude energy. You know, you've got like a quick trip here in March and then a bigger vacation in the month of April. This may be something that you're planning or something that you're actioning during this time. And some of you may even purchase a car in the month of uh, March or even get like a company car if you are entering into uh, a new job or a promotion or some sort of raise. Now, if some of you have come to uh, this reading and in 2023 you were made redundant or you um lost your job or walked away from something and you're currently looking for a position, I definitely see that February is your month to get a high position with status, new money. Um, and there's this energy here of in the month of uh, March, it's almost like you feel like leaving it because it is a lot of responsibility. But 
I feel things start to calm down in April. So it's almost like you give it a month to just see if it's going to be what you really truly want it to be. And you start to ease yourself into it and suddenly you feel like a little bit more relaxed. And I see you actually staircasing in that role quite quickly to another level. You get more creative freedom in it and also more money, okay? Now, the chariot card also indicates, you know, um, not only keeping a tight rein on your finances, but also being in control of your destiny. So I really feel there's some sort of decision that needs to be made in the month of March where you'll have to, it's almost like taking a left or a right in life. Uh, I do see that destiny is intervening to help you on this. So it could be like there's some sort of plot twist that goes on in the month of March, but there's so much good news because this is a card of triumph. This is a card of reaching your goal, committing yourself and seeing progress in something that you've been bravely moving towards, okay? This is about you also exerting your willpower. So I feel there may be um, this little... I'm just getting a small energy of something that you've tried to cut out. There may be a moment of temptation in the month of um, March there for you. And again, also in September, whatever this is. Uh, but I feel like you don't allow it to win. Okay, so for example, if you've given up coffee, um, you know, you may be tempted to have a coffee in the month of March, but you're sticking to your willpower. I see that you don't allow it to um, infiltrate. We've got the Empress energy. So yeah, you're nourishing yourself, you're choosing healthier options. Uh, also, some of you um, may actually give birth in that month um, and it may be a little bit early, okay? Um, so if you're currently pregnant and you're your due date is in and around like April time, um, you may actually uh, have like um, an earlier birth, okay? So that's coming there. Um, and I feel like, hmm, now this is not gonna resonate with everyone. Um, <laughs> what I'm seeing here is, of course, if you're pregnant, everybody kind of has like a birthing plan, right? But I feel like uh, the birthing plan goes absolutely according to plan, right? But I feel like you getting to the um, to the hospital or wherever you've decided to have uh, the birth, I feel like, <laughs> and this is not going to resonate with everyone, but it's almost like um, there may be some sort of traffic and you may need to like take a taxi. Bizarre, I know, I'm just seeing that happening. Um, so not there's no worry here, there's no like paranoia or anything like that. You get there, it's all fine. And it's, I really feel it's like 2% energy. So if you're pregnant, say for example, there's 100% of you out there who's pregnant, only 2% I see um, like having this thing where you, you may need to call a cab unexpectedly or, or, or call an ambulance unexpectedly. Um, I, I feel it's, it, it, you're taking it in your stride. That's why I feel it's like you're calling a cap. You're like, oh, this wasn't, this. I'm due next month. So, okay, let's just go straight. I hope that makes sense. Uh, there's nothing to worry about. It's a beautiful uh, pregnancy there. And um, I feel like you get everything done, but there may be just a little bit of a plot twist there at the end. Okay, so I don't know who's going to resonate with that. Please write in the comments box below uh, around about uh, March time uh, to let me know uh, how that went. Okay, um, but the Empress card indicates that you are in full bloom, that you are attracting a lot of attention this month, whether you're uh, pregnant or not. Uh, I definitely get an energy here of you being magnetic, but also you like nourishing yourself um, and that you are ripe with potential. So this could be a month where you give birth to a new idea or you, know, you um, move on and branch out to create something truly special. I get an energy here of you kind of also, you know, making sure that you don't neglect your own needs. I feel like you are getting out into nature, uh, finding peace of mind, um, implementing spiritual practices, but also highly creative and really productive during this month as well. There may be something that you launch that is really independent. Nine of Pentacles is like to do it on your own. So I definitely get this sense of you like being in the flow of, I can do this, I'm in control and um, I'm self-sufficient. You know, that's the energy that I've got coming here as well. Nine of Pentacles also indicates a lot of you are going to like, you know, underline your focus and, um, you know, your drive and discipline when it comes to your goals and dreams. Because the Nine of Pentacles can be to stick to your program, stick to your plans and utilize all the tools that are at your disposal. 
And this card is literally like, you know, creating more financial wealth. The two of these cards together, it's like money, money, money. Okay. So I feel that a lot of you are really focused on some sort of budget or plan. And I feel there's a lot of wealth being attracted to you. And these could be like new ideas that you're implementing, but also I feel uh, some of you, there may be some sort of um, hold up in finances that you're waiting for, waiting for someone to pay you or waiting for some sort of uh, inheritance to come through. I don't really like talking about that, but um, it's there. So I have to mention it. I feel the energy of it. Um, it may be that you hear news on it um, and you know it starts to move forward in the month of March, but you won't get it until April. Okay. That's the energy that I've got coming here as well. And some of you may even get like a financial rebate in and around this month as well. Okay. Uh, the chariot card, some of you may think about moving or relocating. And if you're looking at real estate this year, I definitely see that you're going to get some really great advice and maybe even dealing with some sort of like uh, establishment that helps you put all the variables in place to, um, you know, buy a dream property. So I definitely see that, uh, March, April, May, may be a perfect time for you to, uh, find that real estate property dream, or even if you're going into real estate as a business, and I feel like you, uh, you move or relocate in some way, because I see like this energy for you this year of relocation. Okay. Um, now we do have the world card. When we move into April, this is a big deal because it means, you know, a lesson for you is coming to an end. So if you've been experienced like a, a cycle of repeat in your life in some way where you feel, you know, Oh, don't tell me this is happening again. I can't believe it. I feel like suddenly, you know, you have unlocked the next level because you've learned a lesson. Like many, many years ago when, you know, I was uh, trying to find uh, my life partner, you know, I would go out and meet people or try and go out on a date. And every time I connected to somebody, it kind of ended in the same sort of way, even though it was a different person. I was being uh, taught a lesson about valuing myself, about reestablishing my boundaries and making sure that, you know, um, I had confidence in myself and, you know, I kept giving away my power when I was younger, even though I didn't realize it, um, I was doing it. And the lesson kept repeating until one day I was like, hang on a minute. It's, I, I've got to change something here. And I started to look inwards and see what is it within me that keeps attracting this sort of person who, you know, uh, doesn't care about me or really, you know, my belief system or anything like that. Um, what is it that, you know, I've got to really look at this. And I kept noticing that um, I was playing small. You know, sometimes the people that I was meeting, um, they didn't feel so great about themselves. And sometimes I would like, it's almost like I would do what I do best, which is like really care. And, you know, I would like elevate people sometimes at detriment to myself, you know, uh, always bending over backwards, making sure they were happy, their needs were met. And, you know, then suddenly I was like, but I'm actually compromising, you know, my energy, you know, sometimes, especially of, uh, after work, I'd be like, oh, you know, th the first thing I want to do is just go home and like, just chill and not see anyone. And then last minute, I'd get a message and say, hey, what are you doing tonight? Do you want to do this? And I would think, my gut instinct was like, you know what, actually, I'd rather just go and home and have a night for me. But then the other part of me is like, come on, just have adventure. They want to see you do all these things. But actually, I realized maybe I was a last minute thought. It was really kind of like, yeah, be spontaneous. But if it keeps happening, it means someone's not planning to create space or hold space for me in their life. And then suddenly I started to just say stop. And I thought, you know, if someone creates space for me in their life, you know, okay, they say, look, what are you doing on Thursday? Because I really want to see this movie and I want to see it with you. It's planning. It's saying I am block booking a day or an evening for you and me time. And it's not like last minute, like, did someone like cancel on them or, you know, maybe they just had an opening. Great. But if it kept happening, I felt like they were not, you know, leaving space for me in their life. And as their partner, they should have, um, because I was, and, you know, of course, you know, let's not get into semantics here because 
Sometimes we can't create space because we're busy. I get that. But if it's constant is what I'm talking about. So when we learn the lesson, then we actually like unlock the next level. And I feel that's something that you're learning. And I'm just giving that as an example because I feel like you're learning so many lessons. We're all the student of life, okay? And with the world card, I definitely see that this is a month where you, um, you know, almost start your new year. Now this could be through like new friendships, new relationships, new environments, um, even new projects or you know, opening yourself up to learning in some way. Um, but I definitely get this sense here that you're completing something. Could be completing a project, tying up loose ends because you're going traveling. I see a major vacation happening in this month for you as well. So um, also it could be that you're relocating or even emigrating. This could be something that's on your mind. Where do you truly feel like you belong? Because your overarching energy is about your calling and also where your heart feels like it belongs this year. And you're really not going to um, follow any path that does not resonate with your true heart, okay? Uh, now also the world card indicates success. So the first, uh, as I said, five months, so much success, so much prosperity, so many good opportunities coming your way. Um, I do see like, like around about June time, there is a major plot twist for you. We've got the tower, okay? But I'll get there when I get there. Um, the world card indicates that you're going to be in the right place at the right time to meet the right opportunities. Eight of Cups, travel, okay? Ooh, okay, that card obviously wanted to come off there as well. Uh, I love that. Uh, you know, the energy I'm getting from this card, it's almost like you are walking away from anxiety. You're walking away from overthinking. You're uh, walking away from fear. And also I get this energy. I just want to tell you the energy because I feel, I almost feel like it's a nine of swords. Okay. I'm probably wrong, but I'm just, mm, you know, suddenly I've had like a real shift. It's almost like nine of swords, seven of cups. So, I mean, it could be either or. Maybe it's because the eight of cups is so close to the seven of cups there, but uh, I'm going to take a look at this card now in a moment. But I really get a sense here that you're really looking at your inner critic. Okay, we all have one. And I really feel like you're looking at the way sometimes you talk to yourself, especially when things go wrong or get a little bit negative in your world, because, you know, we're all human. We're riding that wave of life, the ups and downs. Sometimes things just, you know, fall away. Sometimes things don't go the way that we want. And I feel like you're looking at how you talk to yourself because it's so important when we're about to do something truly amazing in our lives. Sometimes that inner critic starts to really amplify and say, well, what if you fail? You know, are you really good enough for this? Can you really do it? And I feel like you're silencing that inner critic to say, actually, yeah, I am good enough to do this. And then some, you know, what if I fly? What if I'm more successful than my wildest dreams? What if I'm more happy, you know, living in an environment that is not here right now um, more than I've ever been. So I feel like you're being bold and daring and doing something different. King of Swords, I was wrong on both accounts. So it's swords for sure, but I was totally wrong on that. Um, you know, I'm always happy to say when I'm wrong, I'm super honest with like that. Um, but I was getting this energy of you like, you know, dampening the inner critic. And the King of Swords really is to think before you act. So it is about being very cerebral. Um, and we've got some mending there as well going on. So it can be that you are looking at how you can, you know, um, almost like um, support yourself in your mind and really like back yourself up rather than tear yourself down in situations. But the King of Swords is literally to uh, use reason over intellect to strategize a plan, think before you actually action anything. But it's also about, you know, creating a foundation for the future. So some of you, you may be, um, I did say that some of you may actually think about leaving a position in the month of uh, March, and it may be a new position at that. You may think about leaving a place, but I feel with the Eight of Cups and the King of Swords, Eight of Cups is to leave something that may not be emotionally fulfilling. King of Swords is like, suddenly you think, hmm, maybe I should stay. Maybe I should think about this. Is this a savable position? Because the King of Swords, as you can see, has like a needle and thread there. So it's like, can I mend this situation? And I feel like you do. Okay. And I feel, you know, like, if you're working in a highly pressurized environment and then something happens that's critical on that day, and you know, most people in your shoes would say, I'm done, I'm gone. 
that's it. I can't do this anymore. But you're really strong enough. And you're like, okay, how can I use this best to my advantage? And because you have that willpower, that staying power, it's almost like people in positions of authority, they respect you more because they see your strength. And they think, hang on a minute, I really want to keep this employee. And I want to elevate them. So I feel there's something in and around the month of April where you get elevated even further because you stayed in something that had the potential to be uh, very critical. Okay, so that's coming through there as well. Also, with the Eight of Cups, this is a plot twist energy or a new approach. Okay, so I feel like you might find an alternative route to get to some sort of plan or something you've been thinking and then action it. Okay, um, also, I feel with the Eight of Cups there, um, some of you may go traveling in the month of April. As I said, big vacation there, something you've been thinking about for a long time. But when you get there, it's like you love it, but you may not stay 100% in the place you booked. You may actually move around or travel around quite a lot. You may use like one main place as a base, but I feel like there's so much on offer. So I get this energy of you being in a very explorative uh, phase then as well. Now, as we move into uh, the month of um, May here, this is really about a lot of abundance. It's uh, you nurturing yourself. It's really about you looking back and feeling proud of everything that you've accomplished. I mean, don't get me wrong. I feel like, you know, your year is going to be very busy. This is a very productive card. It means you're in the flow of doing, birthing new ideas, but also implementing self-care routines and looking at yourself like you made some really great decisions. So this is almost like a check-in month because the Empress is really about nurturing seeds. Okay, and you've got a lot of flowers here uh, right at the beginning. So it's like all the seeds are already like they've been planted. And I feel this is something you've been already working on for quite some time. You see some sort of fruition there. You see a reward there coming in. But this is about putting your own needs first. It's about establishing your power in a situation. Now, I cannot ignore the fact that, um, you know, although it doesn't look like your priority is love this year, if you are looking for a relationship and you're a single Piscean out there, I feel like there's a high potential for you to meet uh, someone traveling this year or someone who is traveling. And um, I feel that there's a high potential for you to meet them in the month of February. Also in, um, I mean, the energy I'm getting is April, May would also be a great time. Okay. And of course, I feel there is um, October and December, but I feel like you could meet anyone throughout the year at any point, but these are the highest energy points for you to meet someone. Uh, and it's a soulmate who's coming in here because of course we have the emperor and the empress present, which tells me this is a perfect year for you to meet your, uh, forever person. Okay. I just heard, uh, you know, that, um, TV show friends, uh, and they say, uh, they're your lobster. I just heard that. So, um, I feel it, it may be a little bit like that, okay, where um, you meet someone who's meant to be perfect for you. So, uh, yeah, uh, it could also be that you're about to see a rerun of Friends where um, you see that particular episode or some sort of memes about that. And again, it could be a signifier that you're about to meet your soulmate. Now, if you're in a high level commitment with uh, someone already, I feel, you know, that there's going to be a lot of changes in your relationship for the positive. Both of you may move in together, or if you're already moved in together, you may relocate and establish yourself in like a larger home. Okay, I'm seeing that there as well. Somewhere that's a little bit more rural in the countryside is what I see. Um, now, also, I'm getting an energy here of you increasing your wealth in some way and it could be from the home space so it could be that you are you know selling things that perhaps you've outgrown in order to create more wealth for yourself or it could be that you know you're restructuring eight of wands I mean, you keep getting every card that indicates you're leveling up and you know you also keep getting number eight eight of wands eight of cups eight is the number of this year, okay? This is an eight year, which means there are infinite possibilities for you to tap into, to create uh, more abundance, more prosperity, more happiness. But also eight is the number of money. It's wealth, as well as the number of the self. Um, now we have the three of swords here, um, and we have the four of wands. You celebrate something that was difficult, okay? So I definitely see that, you know, with the three of swords, this is, you know, 
testing times. But with the uh, four wands showing up there, it's like, you know, you celebrate a win. It was difficult. It made a mark on you. But I feel like, you know, this is about you accomplishing something that you will um, remember for all of time. Uh, also, I feel with the eight of wands there, uh, some of you, you know, there's a trip coming up here, which, you know, it's almost like I feel wherever you decide to book your trip this year, it just feels like you get there. And it's like, mm, it's nice, but surely there's other places to see that are more interesting. So I feel there's something regarding that happening here as well. Um, now, Three of Swords, uh, I'm going to pull a separate card on this because whatever it is, it doesn't phase you. Your overarching energy is the Empress. And as I said, it's not gender specific reading, but this indicates that some of you may look at what you cut out that was hurting you. Uh, whether it was a food substance, whether it was a person, whether it was a, a toxic environment or a situation. And I feel like you're so much better without it. Okay. It's almost like a remembrance of like, you know what? I'm so glad that I moved away from that situation. And uh, it could even be an environment. Like say, for example, if your neighborhood uh, isn't uh, very safe or isn't, you know, what you hope it to be, I feel like you may move away from that. And that's happening at the beginning of the year. And you look back and go, you know what? I made the right move because there's two big move months um, here for you in March and April. So I really feel that, you know, you did the right thing, whatever it is. And the four of wands, I feel like big invitations coming in, going out there, having fun, enjoying, um, you know, yourself. Also, I see someone reuniting with you in this month. Uh, this could be someone who really upset you um, or someone who um, in the past, you know, was not acting in their highest regard. And they come towards you with an olive branch. Only you can decide whether you allow this person back into um, your world in some way. Uh, but I feel like, you know, it's almost like you let bygones be bygones and you move on from it. It's almost like you didn't need the closure because you gave yourself closure. That's how strong you are. And you certainly don't need anybody to come into your life to tell you that they're sorry for hurting you. So I feel like you already recognize that that no longer plays any role in your life any further. Now, the Four of Wands also indicates a very creative phase for you. So this is a big month where you're going to have loads of incredible ideas to help you and also a cathartic process where, you know, you get your feelings onto canvas or, you know, write a book or, you know, um, create a piece of art or do something where you channel your energy for your highest regard. Um, Four of Wands also indicates, you know, being out with good people, good company, letting your hair down, but it's ultimately about celebrating and it's celebrating something that you're prepared for. So if you felt that you were trying to accomplish something that was going to be truly difficult, you win the day, you accomplish it and you move on from it. Eight of Wands, you know, indicates you are protected. As you can see, all those umbrellas there, they represent protection from storms, from difficulty, from anyone trying to rain on your parade or, you know, dampen your spirits in any way. And that includes yourself. So I definitely get a sense with the Eight of Wands that you're moving on. And this month is going to be super busy. Okay, it's going to be a very fast paced month because eight of wands means, uh, you know, that things start to pick up pace, that there is an energy of transformation. But also I see some of you may even try to, you know, live a more nomadic lifestyle. So if your goal is to set up a business where you can be more sort of socially mobile as well as physically mobile, I definitely get a sense here that you're elevating, but also you're implementing like some sort of change in your location. And it may be multiple changes for some of you out there. Um, now, as we move into the month of June, we've got a tower. Okay, every sign is getting a tower in some way, apart from Virgo, I think. Um, and this is an indication that there's a restructure. The tower is not to be feared. It indicates you like really um, restructuring your life in some way in order to, you know, break down what is old and not necessary in order to rebuild stronger and new. Uh, the tower can also be a shock. It could be something that occurs either in terms of a global event or on a personal scale that will shake your foundation and you will need to take stock of the situation in order to, um, you know, create security. Um, sometimes you just got to let things fall. Okay. Especially if, you know, things are not working because the universe sends us so many signs that we need to release something or something's not good for us. And if we constantly ignore the signs, then we get the tower, but the tower is actually to liberate yourself. So if you're feeling a little bit stuck, 
in some area of your life, you know, a repetitive cycle or routine in this month, I definitely see that you're taking the initiative to uh, restructure and change in order to you know, be really honest with yourself and get the best out of life that life can offer. Because the tower can sometimes be seen as a prison that we even create ourselves, whether that's we build, a, you know, a cage of fear around us, or whether we actually, um, you know, have our belief system rocked in some way, or if we actually, you know, allow people to control us in some way or even if we get into like a cycle of repeat that's a little bit humdrum where we feel we get up in the morning you know we get ready for work or we look after the kids and then we just go home we create dinner we go to bed and we do the same thing and that's nice it's comfortable humans like to have some sort of routine but if you're constantly doing it sometimes the routine can get a little bit boring and then we start to get complacent that we'll change it tomorrow we'll change it tomorrow suddenly five years have passed and nothing has changed so I feel like it could be a bit of a wake-up call for you in some area of your life in June where you're like something needs to change that um, you now have control or you can master in some way so let me just pull a card on that tower eight of cups you walk away from something you're having a lot of eight of cups energy which is indicating that you know if something's not right you're drawing a line in the sand you're saying enough is enough eight of cups is to release but it's also to speak and think about your journey to visualize what it is that you want. I mean, this could be a month where you restart something, okay? Um, it could be that you uh, restart a project or a way of living that perhaps you're reconnecting to your sense of self. Um, something that was slow moving, okay? Something that perhaps is not even working for you. You just walk away from it and say, it's enough. You know, you tried and um, you may venture into something else in this month. Okay, we've got the Eight of Pentacles. Yeah, so it's more about, I just want to be very clear, you're getting so many eights, which means this year is going to work in your favor more than most, okay? Um, the Eight of Pentacles, whatever it is, you manage to repair it. So, um, for example, if you're in that repetitive routine and cycle, suddenly you bring a little bit more excitement into your life by doing new things, things that you haven't done before. Um, because, you know, the Eight of Cups is to walk away from everything that is kind of present in your world that is emotionally fulfilling to a certain degree. But it almost like begs the question, is there something else out there? Is there something like a missing ingredient or that missing piece? And you started off really strong with the Nine of Cups because the Eight of Cups, anyone who walks away on the Eight of Cups is searching for something other that missing ingredient and you got the nine of cups so I feel this year it's almost like you're looking at the holy grail of life you know that missing piece that you feel that missing ingredient that can make life more interesting more exciting more happy uh, whatever it is for you because it's going to be different for everyone and I feel like you're going to find it okay you got the nine of cups you will find that wish that you are hoping to achieve and the eight of pentacles uh, i definitely see that some of you may actually learn from uh, it's almost like a big wake-up call you may have a big learning lesson that month but it's a new one okay so someone could shock you in their behavior someone could um really surprise you with um like a new role because the knight of pentacles can be about like money um, I mean, for example, I'm, I'm getting a bit of an energy regarding like a bill. There could be some sort of shocking bill that comes through. Um, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. The energy I'm being given is like interest on like a non-payment is what I'm seeing here. So for example, uh, I'm just trying to give you an example of the energy that's coming through and I may not be 100% on it, but it could be, for example, a bill that you never received and it just went clean out of your mind anyway. Or it could be like, for example, um, if you purchase something on like a credit card that you rarely use, right? And you paid off the full amount, but there was interest on that as well. And the clerk that you dealt with didn't actually tell you about the interest. And then it just sat dormant on your card, just like accumulating more interest, more interest, more interest. And suddenly you're like, oh my gosh, where did this come from? And you're like, no, I paid that bill off. And then the clerk will say, no, actually you paid the full amount off, but just not the interest that was due like a week later on it. Uh, there must be some miscommunication. I actually see that you will get your money back. Okay. But it could be like a surprise bill that comes in. 
um, and you get your money back, whatever it is. So um, I feel like some of you, you know, you lead with integrity. You're honest. Uh, I mean, for some of you, you could even threaten like legal action on it, but I see that it goes in your favor and it doesn't last long. I feel like straight away they realize they're in the wrong and you get your money back, whatever that is. Okay. Now, as we move into the month of July here, this is about balance. We've got the justice card here, but it's also about fighting for what you believe is right. Also finding solutions to any difficult situations there. Some of you may even have some sort of contract change. So if you're in a working environment, you may hear of a merge or some sort of uh, change in your working environment that shocks you, but it will require a new contract. So pay close attention to any uh, contracts, new ones especially, uh, the small print, make sure that you have all the benefits and bonuses um, if you had any to start with uh, before because any new start date, of course, nullifies the contract and everything that went before. So just watch out for that. But what I love about this card, it's number eight, which means the number of the self, number of wealth, the number of uh, prosperity, infinite possibilities. And this is about you being really honest with yourself to make some adjustments, making sure that you're in the flow, focusing on your goals and your dreams. And it's also uh, an energy here of you having a lot of paperwork to deal with. So because it's off the back of the previous month, it's almost like there may be some sort of major paperwork that you have to deal with and you discover something that either um, got missed or was left dormant in some way and you may have to restructure it in a way that works for you. I mean, looking at the chart, like globally, this could be a time period where there was like some sudden uh, correction in terms of interest rates or, um, you know, prices of living in some areas like gas, electricity, that sort of thing. There may be some sort of restructure. But as we've got the strength card here, I feel, you know, that you are in command and it doesn't weigh you down. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't have the power to change your circumstances. King of Pentacles, more money back, okay? For some of you, if you're going through a legal case, I mean, you're going from a Knight of Pentacles to a King of Pentacles, this is a major win in a legal case and getting uh, some sort of financial pay out there. But also the King of Pentacles is about being on top of your money. Um, and as I said, there's some sort of ink, like, it's like a change in like policy or structure that could mean like more money in your pocket. Okay. Now, of course, there are some major elections going on around the world um, during, um, you know, some parts of the, I mean, the latter part of the year. So there may be some sort of increase incentive at some point in order to be like positive and, um, you know, yeah, I watch out for that. That's that's what's coming there. Okay. Uh, King of Pentacles, in terms of your personal energy, this is about attracting more abundance, but also making really great decisions and manifesting what you desire. This is about sticking to your plan. Any money really comes from your hard work. Okay. But it's an ability to attract more that you have available to tap into. So this would be a perfect month if you've not set up like a second stream of income. It could be that you discover a really great way to earn more money through a second stream of income, whether it's online or whether it's um, from home, because I get an energy this year from the home space doing something creative that could uh, launch more money for you. But also it's about being serious about your administrative tasks, you know, being in the flow of ambition, your projects. And that doesn't mean just in the working environment, you know, even if you're retired, this is about you focusing on your projects, things that um, have like a stability in your life. You know, if you've got like a favorite day that you like to treat yourself to dinner and only go to a cafe by yourself or a restaurant by yourself, or if you have, you know, uh, an exercise class, a swimming class on a, a Thursday that you love going to, and it puts you in the company of like like-minded people where you have a little bit of a chat or just breaks up the energy of the week. I really feel like you're just in your day-to-day -day energy and you're being practical but also this is a card that indicates you know that you're very very smart and you use your uh your ingenuity and your intelligence there to make some adjustments that sees you living your best life and it's a very positive month for you i mean there's definitely an increase in finances in the month of july for you so this could come in the form of like uh, a new 
position or raise or you know that you step into something that brings in new income in some way you're getting a lot of king energy which means you're really owning it this year king and emperor energy so it's establishing yourself learning new knowledge of how to elevate so it could be that you're fast tracking um, your life in some way for the positive to elevate and as you move into um, August there this is about you um, implementing self-care really disconnecting from anything that's been holding you back there's a lot of confidence here but also this is about you um really like in control and having patience i feel you've learned the gift of patience over many many years and with this card this is about you doing something bold and daring like suddenly coming to the fore and saying enough I've got unlimited resources available to me to tap into whatever it is I want to work with. And I really feel this is one of your strongest points in the year inside. Okay. There's a lot of external goodness and prosperity and good news happening around you at the beginning of the year, but almost it feels like August is when you're like, you know what? I am unique and that is my superpower. I really feel like you are a real force to be reckoned with and you're breaking the chains to anything that held you back in the past. And I see some things that you're doing this year, especially at the beginning of the year, you're almost going to say to yourself, why didn't I do this before? Well, there is always a time and a place and divine timing is in play. So I really feel the time is now for you. Um, we have the six of wands, so much success and the tower, you know, this tower, it is certainly working for you because it's like this restructure, this plot twist, whatever you liberated yourself from in the month of June there, it is successful. Okay. So you may shock a lot of people around you because of your transformation. I mean, this could literally be uh, some sort of transformation in terms of, um, you know, you aesthetically, maybe a new wardrobe, uh, maybe a new you, you know, all the goals that you have start to really uh, show and, you know, be revealed as it were, because the truth comes out for some of you. I feel like some of you may even discover a truth in this month. It's almost like off the back of the month of July, but it puts you in a position of power. Six of Wands is, you know, to be in the spotlight to be recognized for your strength you know that you hold it all together and you also have the uh, courage to let things fall as they may because remember what is meant for us will never pass us by so sometimes we spend a lot of time holding on to things or people or situations that are not meant for us and the universe sends us constant signs and this could be through you know your body for example many years ago when i was in a working environment I was very, very toxic. I could barely get out of bed. You know, I'd wake up in the morning thinking, oh gosh, I've got to go to this place again. I can't believe it. You know, it was just so horrible. And, you know, my body was telling me, you really don't belong at this environment. It is sucking the life out of your soul. And I did not listen until there came a crisis point where the universe said, okay, I'll change. We can't take this anymore. She's not listening. She's really stubborn. So I feel it's really important that you listen to your body, mind, and soul and your environment because I feel the signs are there. If you need to change anything, you're in control of the changes and they're going to be so successful for you. Six of Wands is victory. Okay, but it's also about stepping to the limelight. These two cards could be that if you want to be in the public eye, suddenly, after all that hard work, no one will see the hard work. Okay, suddenly you're launched into the limelight. Suddenly you're famous, but no one will see the years of work that it took for you to get to this position in the first place. And they'll probably list you as a newcomer, even though you've been working in the environment for like 10, 20 years, they're still calling you a newcomer because now you're... Um, your face is everywhere, although it took you so long and so many uh, long nights trying to get to where you are, okay? So this is a, like a major breakthrough, critical moment for you this year of success. And I feel, you know, on a more localized scale, it could be that you're recognized for what you do. People in positions of authority are noticing you at work if you're in a career environment. Also, it could be that suddenly you find a new community, people that you really resonate with and they, you know, really look up to you. They're very aware Aware of you some of you could actually like join a very uh, prestigious group that perhaps all the doors have been shut for years and suddenly like you are welcomed in you know it could be um, yeah something major for you where suddenly it's like all the doors are opening and you're feeling really blessed but also it's a time where you renew your trust and faith that everything is happening for you for your highest good in your own unique way okay 
Now, as we move into the month of September, we have the Devil card. This is major temptation. So this could be a month where, um, you know, you've had a major success in some way. And suddenly when we get to that position in life, we start to think imposter syndrome or how can I continue this success? Okay, when you reach a pinnacle, there's always that position. You know, right now they're showing me like famous boxers, for example. Um, you know, when they get to the top of their game, they've won like the heavyweight title or the lightweight, is there, no, featherweight title. Uh, they've shown me like belts and things. And they've had like this incredible, I don't like watching it or anything like that. And I'm not condoning it in any way, but they're just showing me like, you know, a belt with gold on it. And it's like they won. And now they have to prepare for everybody who wants to take their title. Someone wants what you've got. And I feel this could be a month where you are really defending something that you've accomplished. Uh, there may be some competition there and it may throw up a little bit of anxiety. Okay. But I actually see that you're doing what you love and nobody's going to take away that from you. Okay. I really get a sense here that it's just like fear amplified, especially when you've done a really great job. Now now you're like, well, what next? So also I'm getting an energy of temptation. And the temptation is like something that you cut out at the beginning of the year. There may be a little bit of pressure in the month of September for you. And I feel like you're managing your stress levels really well this year. But there could be a temptation to return to something that, you know, um, you rely on when um, things don't go so well. Okay, because I feel there's going to be a lot of shifts for you in the middle of the year. And whilst I see those shifts going really well for you, I feel there may be a little bit of like pressure. Okay. Um, especially if you're moving or relocating, you're doing something wonderful for you, but the pressure can be immense. So sometimes we have something that acts as like a crutch for us. Like for me, it may be chocolate, you know, suddenly I'll reach for the packet of biscuits and all of a sudden I've eaten those biscuits and I'm like, oh, I just added all my feelings and now I want another packet of feelings, you know? So it's kind of like um, you looking at where your attention goes when you feel things are uh, difficult. And I feel like you're finding an alternative way. You're almost like finding the root cause, the trigger, because as you can see there, the moon represents uncertainty or feeling anxious. Um, also the theatrical curtains are like something that presents itself to you when the going gets tough. And it's almost like it tempts you to um, perhaps perceive something that's not really there or react in some way in order to comfort yourself. You know, so I feel, you know, you're identifying the fact that this is like an innocuous pair of hands that's creating a very ominous shadow there. So it's almost like you get to the root of something this month and you liberate yourself from something. Yeah, Ten of Swords, a little bit of tension there, um, but also this could be um, about you and that point of epiphany, realizing that you're putting an end to old ways. And sometimes there's gonna be temptation. You know, we're all human. No matter what we give up, no matter what we try to do, sometimes we're going to think back to a time but this time with the Ten of Swords, you're responding differently to a challenging situation, okay? You're seeing it for what it truly is. So this is actually a really great month for you to liberate yourself out of something that um, has been plaguing you or been very difficult for quite some time. For some of you, it could be uh, addictions to something, or I mean, it could be obsession, could be overthinking. Thank you so much. Spirit guys going angels. Uh, also, it could be like a painful ending. So especially if you are embarking on a new relationship and you were hurt in a relationship uh, previously, you are really guarding your heart. Sometimes we don't even realize that we're guarding our heart. It's really important to recognize when you're building a boundary and not a wall because a wall lets nothing in or out. And if you're looking for love, then the wall will prevent you really truly opening up to the love that's available to you. But also, uh, if you're building a boundary, that means you're establishing who you are, what you want in a relationship, but you're letting the right love in as well, okay? Uh, we got the Three of Cups here. Um, I feel like you've got a really great support network, and these people come to the fore, okay? Some of you, it could be that you're feeling a little bit isolated or stuck, and you, um, you build new friendships in this month. But the Three of Cups, it tells me that there is a relief, Okay, it tells me that there is a celebration. You realize that there was a temptation to fall back into a pattern and you overcame it. So this is a big game changer this year for you as well, especially in September. 
Now, as we move into the month of, oh my guys, just want you to be aware, three cups also means celebration, getting out there, having fun, okay? And when you've got the uh, devil card, it can indicate that this may be a high month for excess, okay? Uh, intoxication or, you know, it could be some sort of feast date or someone's birthday, for example, that you get invited to. Um, and with the Ten of Swords, it could be like you're going to have a big old hangover, okay? So if you don't want to live that life or you don't want to live that life anymore, I feel like you are just identifying when it's too much, okay? It doesn't mean you're going to limit yourself, but it could also mean you're just saying, you know what, enough is enough. You're drawing that line in the sand. And if you've truly cut something out and you're like not revisiting it, I feel like there may be the temptation, but you identify that actually that has no power over you anymore and you're moving on from it. Now, as we move into the month of um, October, most signs have a tower in this moment. So you've got the judgment card, which means you're really focusing on your true north, your true calling. And, you know, the judgment card is a wake up call energy, but it's also about finally seeing things as they truly are and looking at the path that you need to take. So I definitely see like a rebirth here, a renewal of faith, a self-evaluation period, really checking in with where you are on how you're reaching your new life. And, you know, still... I feel there's an energy here of you like understanding your role in your true calling. I feel like you're listening to your calling. Now, the, the, the judgment card is actually a card of second chances. So I feel, you know, some of you, it could be an opportunity comes back around in a different form. We got the devil card there. Okay. Interesting that every time I shuffle, there tends to be like a correlation between the cards, either the card in front or the card behind. So you got the devil card there and we got the two of wands. So it could also be an indication of where you feel like you procrastinate, what tempts you during procrastination. But also, I mean, we all do it. So, um, you know, I'm not pointing fingers here at anybody, but also the two of wands is like knowing when you're just taking a pause to plan. And also know when nothing is happening, it doesn't mean that, um, you know, if you can't observe something happening, doesn't mean it's not happening behind the scenes. Because the two of wands actually means that there is progress, that the universe is helping you envisage something new. And, you know, that you will see that the universe is aligning you to bring you what you need. But sometimes there's a bit of a pause and we start to freak out that it's not going to happen or we start to get bored or we even start to self-sabotage during these periods. So this could be, you know... The cusp between September and October could be, you know, you just recognizing where self-sabotage traits come in and how you can identify them and nip them in the bud. Um, high Priestess. Now, the High Priestess is caution, okay? So um, it could be a, an element here of you tapping into your intuition, but it could also be, you know, you using your spiritual gifts to open yourself up to um, that knowingness, knowing what is uh, good for you, for your higher wisdom and for your higher good, um, and how you can grow as a result of the circumstances. But also the High Priestess, you know, with these cards, it can be that you're really cautious. And it could be, for example, especially since you had the Three of Cups come in as well, it could be that there's a friend that you're really cautious about that tends to be a bit of a bad influence. So whilst you may want to see them, some of you may delay seeing them or you may actually go, you know what, uh, this lifestyle or this person is not really meant for you anymore and you're evolving from it. But I feel like you're going to trust your intuition. And also with the High Priestess, I get a sense here that some of you may have wanted to launch something in this month but it may get delayed, okay? It doesn't mean it's not gonna happen. It means that you're creating a solid foundation from which to launch from in the first place. So I feel the pause is important. Um, yeah, so this is a strong month for you to use your intuition, develop your spiritual gifts there as well. Now, as we move into the month of November, we've got the moon card. Now, the moon card is a really wonderful card, especially with the way your cards have come out at the moment, because it means whatever's you know, behind the scenes comes to light. So as I said, something that you've been working towards that perhaps you were worried it wasn't going to show up for you. It's almost like the universe says, surprise, here's the reveal. And as you move into November and December there, you see that the wish is given. 
I definitely see, you know, that something that you're hoping for or working towards, uh, it works out for you. The moon card also indicates, you know, your, your goals, the things that you've been visualizing for your future. And I feel, you know, this is about you overcoming a fear this year as well. I mean, it could be something like as simple as overcoming a fear of spiders or overcoming a fear of heights or, you know, overcoming a fear of, um, you know, going really deeply into a relationship with someone and them having the ability to break your heart. So, you know, I feel it's going to be different for everybody, but I feel like you like almost face a fear this year and see how strong you truly are. Now, also, the moon card is an energy of romanticizing your life in some way. It's a Cancerian, Piscean energy, and it's about you being in the flow. But it's also about trusting your intuition, knowing that you're on point. And I definitely get a sense here that the universe is orchestrating something behind the scenes and is going to deliver you what you've been working truly hard to accomplish. But also, I feel there may be something in this month about your independence. Some of you may take a seasonal job during this month or think about doing something more freelance during this time or some of you may even have like second streams of income where you have like a long-term contract and also something on the side that is sporadic that's coming through there too and if you haven't set that up in your life this would also be a month where you may decide to do it but I feel a path is being made clear also I feel this is a very emotionally heightened month for you so I feel spiritually, uh, your emotions are going to be fluctuating this month. Uh, you could be doing a lot of emotional purging this month as well. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide? Uh, Seven of Cups. You may feel a little bit scattered in your energy, but it's really to regroup so that you can focus on what you truly want. Um, you know, Seven of Cups is all about the imagination, dreaming of all the potentials and possibilities, allowing yourself to shine with that Queen of Wands there, okay? Uh, that you're attracting good things into your life, uh, good opportunities, good people. I mean, Seven of Cups is really about focusing on what you desire, okay? Um, when you've got the traditional Rider Waite uh, Seven of Cups there, there are lots of things in different cups. There's a snake in one of them, which represents rebirth, renewal, uh, shedding old skin, and, you know, coming into your own and like life cycles, but also, you know, you've got like a victory wreath there, or you've got pearls there. So it's also about rewards or what is rewarding for you and how do you want to change your life? And as you can see there, this seven of cups, this figure is literally pointing a baton at a star and saying, I want that wish. I want that. I'm focused on that. And then your month of December delivers that. So I definitely see that, you know, something you've been focused on for quite some time. Um, I feel like you're not being derailed from a path. The Queen of Wands, I also feel that you're highly magnetic. So this is a strong law of attraction month where you visualize all that you desire. So it may feel in November that n nothing much is happening. Okay, but it also feels like everything is happening because it's about to deliver something major in December for you. Also, Queen of Wands, I feel that you are building strong friendships during this month and again, very creative, but ultimately you're in the flow of your passions and you're inspired to focus on that dream and that goal. And some of you may also change your appearance in some way during this month. It could be like change of a color of your hair. Uh, it could be an addition to your wardrobe or, you know, a new pair of shoes. Normally, I don't like read aesthetics, uh, but it is coming out there as well. I feel like you're going to get a lot of attention in this month. This could be to do with uh, people, you know, admiring you, but also it could be like... Um, opportunities being attracted to you as well. You're magnetic in the month of November. So uh, be aware that you're in a very powerful position, even though your emotions may be fluctuating a little bit. There's also the potential there that you have a lot to focus on and you may feel a little bit scattered. So I feel like you're being asked to focus on only what's important, what resonates with your heart in the month of November. And as you move into December there, um, we definitely have an energy of you getting a wish come true. Um, you uh, having healed parts of yourself that perhaps have remained open for some time that you've been trying to get closure on. And I definitely see that you're ending a cycle there. Uh, the star energy indicates a brighter future to look forward to. You're setting yourself up for 2025. Uh, everything is really positive, but also you're getting clarity. I feel there's an energy of gratitude here for everything that has gone before. And I feel there was just a few bumps in the road for you, I would say round about June and round about the month of September. But ultimately your year is really, really positive that there 
are lots of twists and turns and the beginning of the year is so prosperous you're going to be in the flow have lots of energy there but the star is also about aligning yourself with that wish and accomplishing it being recognized and appreciated for who you are the people in your life will show you a lot of appreciation especially in the month of December there's an energy of coming togetherness okay but I mean, the star also kind of represents seeing things clearly, a new version of yourself, recognition, optimism, seeing the progress that you made, your reputation speaking for itself. You're going from strength to strength there. Um, and it's, you know, you being bold and daring and seeing that, you know, it's almost like seeing everything that you visualize for your future coming to life and uh, that you are a visionary. You're going to see that the power of your mind this year was so strong that thoughts really do become things and I feel like you're entering that new phase of life where you're connected and I feel like a very inspirational month where there's going to be new ideas as well but ultimately I feel like you're going to see how far you've come in uh, the month of December 2024 and you're going to look back with pride that you did a really good job so let's move on um, to your final cards thank you so much spirit guides going angels can you please guide so if you felt like your reading in particular was all about doorways and possibilities and potential, that's because that is the main energy for your reading, okay? It says here, a doorway, open to possibilities, potential, jobs opening, steps, walking away, risks, shifting focus. And as I said, there's a little bit of a sidestep energy going on, plot twist energy for your year, where you're really like shaking things up a little bit. So again, another deck really supports the energy that's coming through there. We have Big Fish. And it's no accident that you also got a big fish there as well. So that's a big fish in a small pond. So you're really like embracing change, opening yourself up to expansion in some way. And it says here, um, reeling them in, good impressions, on the hook, great catch, lucrative deals. And we've also got uh, resolve, dedicated to achievement. So it's your inner resolve. And it says, um, steady gains, long game, loyalty, effort, and top dog. Okay, so uh, really uh, positive energy there. Let's go and get some final cards. Um, I think they really want this one because this one was left on its own. So I'm going to give you that one there as well. But let's see what else comes out for you. Thank you so much, Spirit Guys, Great Angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Pisceans? What do they need to do? What do they need to know? <laughs> Not just do. What do you need to know? Can you please guide them for their highest good? What are they meant to see? That was interesting. I just, um, what do they need to do? That came out randomly. Uh, we've got finances, uh, perspective. Uh, we've got ready. You're ready to do something in the shadows. So working really hard in silence this year. It says finances. Okay, and it says business and financial matters, fruits of labor paying off and financial opportunities. So definitely, you know, I mean, this year for collectively, everybody's going to be focusing a little bit more on money. Okay, uh, and that's just the way that the planetary alignments are. Of course, you're going to be focused a little bit more on, you know, how your heart feels, your emotions, the people that you care about, family, friends, all of those things. But the majority energy is going to be, um, you know, security wealth this year as well we've got perspective change the meaning of the issue experiences shaping perspective and reflection for change and I feel like you are creating a lot of change in your life this year. You may have already set intentions to do it. I'm actually seeing right now like the sun coming out from behind the clouds. So either you can literally see that as you're listening to this reading or that symbolic of, you know, how things are going for you this year. You may have felt like the sun has been behind the clouds in 2023 for you, but now it's about to come out for you and change everything. Uh, we've got ready. Okay, so you are uh, strong enough to take the next steps. It says ready to do something, an opportunity is ripe, and now is your time. And finally, we've got in the shadows. And it says, uh, keep your personal life private, not the right time, move in silence. And I definitely see that that's something that uh, you will be doing this year, working behind the scenes. Now, it doesn't mean that people, you know, are listening to your projects and wanting to steal your ideas or, you know, wish you unwell. Sometimes a person can look at what you've got and they can be envious because they wish it was them and it can put a negative spin on your plans. So I definitely see you moving in silence being a very uh, positive move for you long term. Uh, when the moment is right to reveal, 
then you'll reveal it. In fact, I feel a big month to reveal anything is probably going to be the month of June for you as well there. Okay, now you've got three rune, which is interesting. Uh, the first one is birch purity. So this is about decluttering your life, purifying your life in some way, you know, getting rid of toxicity. Uh, also, it's about giving birth. So that message that came out earlier, um, you know, being a great parent as well, being appreciated for being a great parent, because sometimes, you know, I mean, being a parent is a very difficult job, right? And sometimes there's no thanks to that. Uh, but I feel like there's going to be pockets, moments throughout the year where your child or children, they show true appreciation for all your guidance and your help and uh, your nurture, okay? Uh, now also we have, let me see this one. Uh, this is, it's interesting um, because I'm being shown this coin in the water and someone discovering a coin like this or having a coin like this, okay? Uh, it's got a Tutankhamun on there, uh, so yeah. Uh, you may find one of those throughout the year or you may actually have one and um, it just helps you attract more wealth. So that's what's coming in there as well. Uh, this is the giant rune, which is all about protection. It's about luck, extra luck, but it's also about learning between action and non-action. And when there is a pause, it is for a reason. And that's when the universe gets an opportunity to come towards you to deliver. Because if we're always in a state of action, you know, sometimes the universe needs to deliver what you're asking for. So you need to know when a pause can recharge your batteries and help you. And we've also got the gift rune, which is all about love opportunities coming in, sudden moments of prosperity and fortune, and also expecting like the unexpected. You know, also this is a, a rune of getting a gift out of the blue. So you may actually get something free this year that you were not expecting or, you know, someone paying it forward in, um, you know, a bill if you're in the supermarket or getting a free coffee. There's just an energy of free stuff. I'm just hearing giveaway, giveaway. So it could be like a competition, a competition giveaway. Maybe you win something this year. So that's coming through there as well. So I'll leave it there. I hope something resonates in that reading for you. If it does, please like or subscribe to my channel. Completely free for you. All you have to do is press a little bell that lets you know when I update my next message. It lets me know that you resonate with the reading, which is so important for me too. Thank you so much, my beautiful Pisceans, and love and light.